now I'd like to open the floor for questions. Thank you, Linda. Is this on? Okay. Can okay, you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm, I'm Mark Latham from the project of VoterMedia.org, and the question for, I guess, especially Peter Klein and also David Gears. Uh, this is a, an experimental business model for competitive independent journalism uh, that you may know. At UPC, we've done this for five years. Uh, the Voter Media Project we've done with um, the AMS, the Student Union, and their new system. It's worked, worked there for five years. So just for those of you who don't know it, um, the model here is, is public funding, tax dollars, like as the CBC is funded, for example, but uh, divided among media competitors uh, according to a, a vote voting system. So we've been running blog competitions at the UBC, UBC to cover the student union. Um, just takes a few thousand dollars a year, and we seem to get pretty effective blogger coverage. So my question is, um, what's your impression of that? I guess you know something, you've seen something about it. What do you think of that as one possible future model? I mean, you know, I, I think, um, I guess I don't know enough about it to comment in, in great detail, but I know from the perspective of our, our, our students, both as um, participants and, and consumers of it, it's been very, very successful. Um, I think anything that, that engages, particularly on a local level and, and on a hyper-local level like at, at, at the university, um, uh, journalists and the public in, in politics is incredibly important because I think there's such a, uh, unfortunately what we see, and I mean, we've always seen this in, in political coverage, but uh, my, my impression is it's only gotten worse, is you have the extremes um, from either side or the multiple different sides of, of the political spectrum who are engaged and the vast majority in the middle gets, gets left behind. So this sort of broader support for it that doesn't come from a particular um, political perspective uh, can be really effective. Thank you. I'll just quickly say that I think, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the 10 years ago we were excited about bloggers, citizen journalists. They were going to just, I guess in their spare time for the love of it, do the kind of work that Charlie does, you know. Um, and, and, it, and we realized quickly that people uh, need uh, to be paid and also that they need homes. They need, they need publications that are resourced. What I like about your model is that um, I know that a lot of people want to invest in journalism, but they don't want to invest in dead-end journalism. It doesn't go anywhere. They don't want to invest in somebody's pipe dream. <coughs> people who want to invest in journalism aren't always looking for profit. It's kind of a bad business, actually, internet media, to invest in if you want major profit figures, right? So investors tend to look at other ways of measuring success. And one is traffic, and it sounds like your model rewards traffic. But another one is um, that uh, for every dollar invested, does it attract money from other places? Is that dollar leveraged? It doesn't end up as being in the black, all <coughs> profit, but is it, is it a dollar turning into one or two or three? So I think these reward systems, right, <clears throat> that reward investors um, or stakeholders or co-op movements that reward them for taking the risk of starting a publication and with the, the thought that if this publication succeeds there'll be other revenue streams down the road that will recognize that success. I think that's that's a great model. Yeah. Thank you. Next. Hello. <clears throat> There's a Latin saying, scripta monet. Something is written down is no mistake. The content of media has now gone faster and faster electronic. You can't hold, you can't hold it in your memory, and you can't hold a gun to the head of someone who has said something in the media and disappeared in the electronic media. Meanwhile, in a Latin allegory, Rome is burning. This country is at the edge. I talked to Jimmy Rivick for a second. I said, look, this country is sinking. People are in debt. What are you doing about it? She says, um, that's a very deep question. And she went on to hug water. I've got to hug one of my friends. So much for that. 
Okay. Who's your question directed to? All of you. Okay. All right. Now, entrepreneurialism on the one hand, and electronics on the other hand. That's a loose relationship. If that's what you're going to stake your future on, that's a pretty tenuous future. Does any of you think there is a future? Hey, what are you What are you doing about it? Hey, somebody has to shed blood. Somebody has to live like a rat in a back alley. Like the construction workers who built the Olympics. They slept their back alleys and built the goddamn buildings. Okay? Now you better do the same thing. Are you prepared to do that? Who would like to continue? There are a lot of people my age who are doing that. Because they weren't the able alleys. to... No, they're not doing that. But the, the thing is, is that at a certain point things have to change. Because in order to have to, democracy, we don't have democracy. We have no future. We're sinking under okay. the waves. We're burning. We've heard from you, sir. Respectfully. Uh, the thing is, is that in order to keep society healthy, we need to have new business models for journalism. People like David Beers, the seeing these new models is really important. And I think people are working towards it. And I think the moment we give up hope, just like in the keynote by Judy, the moment we give up hope, that's when we lose. It's, it's, it's the importance of having these conversations and working towards something, not giving up. Next question. Hi, I have a comment for David. In April of this year, I got a special offer from the New York Times. I could, for a dollar ninety-eight, three years for six months. Then they upped it to three seventy-five. Now, if you would like to charge us a dollar a week to read the tidy, I will pay that dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, when I want to know something, I call Service BC. They connect me to any government office. I am able to get all kinds of freedom of information because I'm a private citizen, I'm not media, and they send it to me every day. Thank you. <laughs> hey, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, with the exception of Charlie, who's in uh, print, all of you, Charlie, well, yeah. the straight is in print uh, and online. Um, it seems that the three of you are, are primarily based in online media, and you're talking about, uh, David, you're talking Peter's about... Peter's actually in television, just okay. to clarify. Fair enough. Um, I'm just curious because you talked about uh, sort of a community of shared values based around journalism. Uh, I'm wondering if you think that there's uh, still, if there's a purpose for, for print media in that sense, that of having a newspaper and people on the street um, you know, being able to, to have a sense that there is this community out there that shares these values that are reading this kind of content instead of it being um, just isolated through to social networks online. Um, Thank you. To whoever wants to answer. Well, I, I think the Georgia Strait has been a, sort of a print, you know, vehicle. I mean, I, I, when I arrived in Vancouver in 91, I recognized it immediately to be a newspaper that was interested in questions starting from a different set of values than, than um, Pack Press at the time. Um, <clears throat> but what the Internet's allowed you to do is with the far smaller capital investment um, be able to um, create these communities uh, that are built on an intersection of shared values and then information that that people with those values want next day to day right so um, what you get is a, a world of a, a world of, of worlds you know you get you get so many different you get the potential for so many different communities of values on the internet the question is um, values alone without resources uh, on the internet sort of turn into uh, ramp rooms you know turn into places where people recycle information and two really important conversations don't happen that need to happen among people who share values the first one is um, investigative work you know finding out the facts so that you're not just uh, 
um, speaking in abstract terms, but the second one is problem solving. And that's what corporate media has. They call it their business pages. And their business pages basically show best practices for making profit, um, uh, diminishing expectations among workers. Um, you know, basically it's a whole range of problems that business is trying to solve every day is solved and reflected back to them on the business pages. <clears throat> so the people who do that kind of reporting, once again, are reporters who find out facts. A lot of this can be crowdsourced as well through the internet. But that's why the internet is a great boon to these new, new communities of values, as long as they intersect with sort of some traditional rigorous journalism. Thank you, Jayden. Sweet. Um, my question is about something that Karen brought up earlier. Uh, but basically, from the perspective of a young reporter kind of trying to make a living um, and having also seen people kind of drop like flies uh, because reporting isn't paying your bills, uh, there's kind of this system in place where you have to end up doing a year's worth of unpaid internships and the assumption that you have to do a lot of writing and work for free. Um, how do you guys, or how, like, how do you encourage people to stay with it and to not give up because in, like eventually this is going to be the workforce. Can you address your question to one person since we only really have time for one answer? <laughs> um, maybe David you could answer this? <laughs> Alright, well, I, I feel your pain. Um, one small hopeful note would be that back in 1980, oh god, 83 or whatever, 82 when I was wanting to be a journalist. Um, I knew that I could not work in a newsroom. I, I was just not constitutionally cut out for it. So I didn't even apply at newsrooms. My idea was I wanted to be a magazine writer, kind of a, you know, I, I loved like the new journalism voices of the time, right? So the world, to me, looked kind of similar to the way the world looks to you now. Because, you know, whether you like it or not, the newsroom job has been taken off the the table, right? Well, it was off the table for me. But back then, six editors in North America were going to determine my fate, basically, right? <clears throat> a couple local editors and then some national magazine editors. And they were the gatekeepers. And I'm like the those sea turtles that you see, they let out like a thousand of them on the beach. <laughs> and then the birds come and get half of them. And then the fish get another half. And then at the end, there's like two turtles out there. You know, like that's why I'm a journalist. It's not skill, it's just like the other ones were getting eaten. And I'm like, yeah, get them. I know. <laughs> so my point is this, right? The internet kind of has changed that in the sense that you are able to become a public person, a public voice, show off your expertise, read the books that Charlie was telling you about, right? You know, you're able to pick an area, become very strong intellectually, and become a public voice through the internet, and you don't have to rely on the six gatekeepers. That's one positive thing. But you still need to make that swim, right? You still need to, you know, you still need to survive. And you still need to outlast other turtles. I mean, like, when Karen says they're dropping, like, they're falling back, you know, good, you know, good, because you're not, you're still here, like, too bad for them, you know, that's kind of my thinking, and that's how I used to look at it, I'd be like, what, you know, that person used to go drinking with all the time, what happened to them, well, it turns out they were a trust fund kid, and after a while they decided that they might just go and join, you know, dad's law firm instead, I'm like, Good. One less journalist, you know. So keep the passion, right? Survive any way you can. Imagine yourself becoming a public person rather than a journalist. You will do a lot of journalism in the process of being a public person, right? But you may teach, you may edit, you may research, you may um, make video documentaries, you know, you may ghostwrite. Nonprofit, you may do a lot of things as a public person, but to me, the internet and 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 this new flowering of democratic voice is makes it a, an exciting time and place to try to become a public person. Much to me, it's a much richer and more exciting time than back in '83. Thank you, everybody.